Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a tutorial on this look right here. And yes, I'm wearing false eyelashes again because I did get the gingerbread extra spicy palette looks like this. I don't know. I just felt like with the look, I just felt like, you know what? I'm going to have to throw on a pair of falsies. Although with me, it's never, I'm just going to pop on a pair of falsies. It's like, it takes like 10 minutes um, at least. I mean, maybe not quite that long, but it's not like it takes like two seconds. Yeah. So, and I also dipped into my gingerbread palette whenever they have like a remake or there's like two of one, I always kind of like to play the two together. So yeah, I was planning to use this palette, the new Becca um, holiday palette. I'm hoping you guys can see right there. It's a stunning packaging. You can see the glitter, but, um, then I picked this up today. So plans changed and this is the look that came out of it. So I do want to start to keep my intros short. So if you guys are new here, please subscribe and hit the notification bell right next to it. That way YouTube notifies you each and every time I upload. And if you are new, welcome to this video. Welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren Jade. I'm 57. I have mature, crepey, wrinkly skin with hooded eyes that are slightly downturned. So I'm always, you know, trying new things, learning new tips and tricks and passing them on to you guys. And hopefully they will help. I know we all have different eye shapes and different, you know, levels of hoodedness, but hopefully some of my tips and tricks will work for some of you. I know that working with hooded eyes is a challenge and I do know that this struggle is real. So hopefully, um, you know, my goal here, I just do things a little bit differently on my channel because I can't follow a cookie cutter, one size fits all YouTube tutorial. So yeah, do things a little bit differently here, but it works for me and my eye shape. And I hope that it will work for you guys too. And you guys will pick up a few things along the way. All right, that's it. I do want to keep this intro short. So if you guys want to see how I got this look and see this gingerbread extra spicy palette in action, then just keep watching and let's get right into this tutorial. Close here. Anyway, it's just beautiful. But then I got the gingerbread extra spicy today. I picked this up. So I had a change of plan. So we're using this. And I've already primed my eyes. I use Max Paint Pot here in Soft Ochre. And I'm using an e.l.f. shader brush. I'm going to grab this shade right here. Plenty of dough. And I'm going to set this a primer P. Louise style. I've been doing this, as you guys know almost every single tutorial and I actually love this method. I'm ditching the old translucent powder method. I never really liked that anyway, so I'm happy to be exiting that. Say bye-bye. Yeah. So I'm just tapping this on my socket area, um, kind of basically through the crease area, transition area. Just basically where I'm planning to apply my shadow. Lightly tapping. And then just out here, just kind of feathering it out here. Using that same brush, I'm going to go into Vanilla Wafers. And I'm going to place this right on my upper socket area here. Right on my upper bra bone right here. Kind of underneath the brow as well. And I'm just going to kind of pull this down so it kind of connects with the that other little shade that I just put down. I love when palettes have like a brow bone shade, like a bone shade, but that's definitely a necessary. But I also love when they have pure white which I know is hard to come by, but you guys know I love those amplifier shades. So a white and a bone shade. It's like, oh, yes, yes. All right, you guys know that I always bronze my crease with Hula bronzer. You guys know I'm always grabbing my Benefit Cheek Leaders palettes back there. But today I'm just going to use Too Faced because we are using the Too Faced palette. So on a JH34, I'm grabbing some Too Faced Chocolate Soleil bronzer. And I'm just going to dust this right on my socket bone. I'm going to take this in. I'm going to kind of feather this out, but I'm going to kind of bring it in and just kind of get it right up towards the brow area. Kind of 
flick that out. I'm also going to grab a little extra and just kind of tie it into my nose contour since I'm right here anyway. All right, so I just got this palette today, so I'm not even sure what I'm going to do, but I think I'm going to take in a pinch right here, and I'm going to take that on my JH32 brush, and I'm going to start to kind of build up some color on my in my socket bone and in this upper crease area here. I'm going to kind of flick that out. And then I'm going to slowly bring that inward. I'm following the alignment of my brow here. So I'm feathering this out here, but I'm kind of bringing this up towards the brow. And then just kind of stopping, kind of right in alignment with the brow. I'm not taking this one all the way in to the nose contour because I'm going to keep this whole area light and bright. I just kind of do that with the bronzer because I like that inner corner shading. It just gives me such a really nice sultry fade. I am kind of defining a little fake crease area right here, but I'm mainly kind of concentrating that like out out towards the end here. So I'm not going to take this shade all the way in. Kind of kind of boring it up a little bit. And I took a little bit of this shade right here for the Graham. It's kind of a really light light brown shade and I just kind of went in here and just kind of added a little bit of definition in my inner socket area as if I were kind of hollowing out this. And then I'm just taking that spicy shade and I'm making that, connecting that here. So it looks something like this. And I took this extra spicy which is what this shade is kind of here. I'm trying to concentrate this like right in here, like towards the back here. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of this shade right here and just kind of map out my lid space here. And this looks like a really deep color, so uh, I didn't want to pick up too much. I'm going to go back in on my JH34 and take just a tiny bit more of that. Just kind of deepen that crease up a little bit right out in here. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and kind of deepen up this outer section right here. And I'm going to take, I think I'm gonna do this one, cinnamon, and then I may go into this one. Really kind of add a little spice to this. I'm gonna put this right on this outer lid right here. kind of stamp right here because I don't want it to go too far out. It's kind of right in this outer area here. Since I'm here, I'm going to grab a couple of these shades and do my lower lash line. I know that some people, some makeup artists, you know, they like to do all on top and then all on bottom. Other makeup artists like to kind of do it as they go. So it's just kind of a personal preference. For me, mainly it's just because I am not thinking about it. By the way, I'm putting this in kind of at a slant, almost kind of like in the same alignment as I would do if I were doing a winged liner. 
kind of stamping out here. I'm staying in alignment with my lower lash line here. And then I'm just going, but I'm not taking this shade above my, above this like a fake crease area, which is um, about two to three millimeters above my natural crease. So I'm keeping it below my natural crease. So I'm not going right into that, right into this area here where I put that fake crease. I'm not taking it that high. I'm just kind of leaving it right here and I'm putting it in at an angle. So yeah, some, you know, makeup artists, they like to do their lower lash line, you know, all on top and then all on bottom. It's just kind of a personal preference, I feel like. For me, it's just because I, I'm not thinking about it. And I just, I switch now to an old MAC 272. It's an old goat hair brush. I don't even know if they even make this anymore. I'm gonna grab this hot tamale shade now. And I like this because it's really small, which is good for my hooded eyes, but it's the exact um, width. I can stamp right here and get that alignment exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to kind of do a little outer V here. So I'm just going to, I'm keeping this right, right above my natural crease. So kind of like right where I kind of mapped out that other crease. And then I'm just going to take this in. I like these angled brushes um, because you can just kind of turn it and just kind of, kind of does the work for you really. And then you just kind of blend around there. I'm going to grab a tiny bit. Kind of get that area right there. So I'm kind of keeping this in this outer V. I'm kind of doing a little slant here. So almost as if I were doing a winged liner. Here. I'm not going to take this too far up. I'm staying right in this socket here. I'm going to grab that blender again. Just kind of soften it up a little bit. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and kind of soften this a little bit, and I'm going to take in a pinch. And I'm back on my JH32 brush. And I'm just going to lightly kind of go over that. My phone shut off, so I'm not exactly sure where I was. I know I was putting in this little kind of outer V here. And then I went back into, I think it was in a pinch, and just kind of blended around it with that shade. Now I'm going to go back in. I'm going to take this pointy brush. This is Sigma E45. I'm going to go back into this hot pink shade right here called Hot Tamale. Now I'm going to go back into my JH34 brush and just kind of do a little smoke. Just kind of blend that into those other shades and just kind of smoke around it here. I'm going to grab a little bit of that in a pinch shade and just kind of on top. I think I got nice flawless airbrush kind of finish out here. Just kind of where it all kind of 
just so that these shades just kind of fade into this bone shade and just kind of you can also take this bone shade these bone shades are like little magic erasers you can kind of if you feel like you know it got up a little too high you can just kind of drag this down and it'll catch the edges of these shades out here you guys know I do that all the time And then I usually kind of go back in with the fluffy blending brush, usually whatever's left on it, and just kind of swirl again out here. You know, once I kind of clean it up, then I go back and put a little bit more extra color in there just to kind of make it really airy. All right. I'm happy with this. I think, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for, you know what, I think I'm going to grab, I'm going to go into the gingerbread palette. And I think I'm going to take, this shade looks really scrumptious right here, as does this gingerbread latte. I have not played in this palette, you guys, literally for like ever. It's been a hot minute since I have did something with this gingerbread palette. So let me take a quick peek here and decide. All right, I'm going to just, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to map out my lid space with this spiked eggnog here just kind of kind of get that mapped out and then I'm going to grab my I'm going to grab my I have to get a this is good I'm going to use this one this is the Anastasia number 18 all right I'm going to go into this sugar daddy shade which is this white one right here And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this, I'm going to get this to show up here in just a second. I'll show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to grab a little bit of this pinky shade and I'm just going to put that like in the center. Just kind of wiggle this. And then this will kind of like kind of mesh this matte shade out here with the shimmer in the fronts. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to going to spritz this brush here in just a second. And this is totally optional and you guys could skip this step but I'm gonna spritz the brush here in just a second I'm gonna take this little do care goat hair brush and just kind of whisk away shimmers right here all right I'm gonna go ahead and grab my fix I have been playing so much with I spritz my brush here a little bit with some MAC Fix Plus. I have been playing a lot lately with not doing the wet brush effect. I'm going to flip the brush over now. I'm going to go into this white shade, the Sugar Daddy shade. So, yeah, I actually like how it looks sometimes without, you know, um, without the mixing medium on the brush. But... I just felt like for this look, I had to do it. Mm. Oh, I love it. I love this. Oh, it's a beauty. Now I'm going to go back into the extra spicy palette and I'm gonna touch up out here kind of touch up that little outer V here
touch up my lower lash line. And I feel like this look is just gonna call for some falsies. Today, it's still kind of unnerving. Um, can't believe that I'm actually wearing false eyelashes now. Well, not in every single video. Don't get used to it, you guys, because like, no. I'm gonna be doing this in every video, but I think I'm gonna take a little bit of that underneath here. And yeah, I think we will pop on some lashes here real quick. All right, so I'm using a Makeup Forever flat definer brush, and I'm just doing a little tiny baby wing here. Actually, I'm gonna take the wing up a little higher. It's usually what I do just because my eyes are slightly downturned, so I always go a little thicker on this outer corner. Then I kind of stamp and just kind of connect it inward. And then I always have it a little thinner on this inner corner. And just a little thicker as we get to the outer corner. I'm thinking about doing the lashes, but I'm not sure, but I think so. It's gonna Stamp a little bit in this outer section right here. Just kind of wiggle it. I always like to connect the wing to the lower lash line smoke. All right, so since I'm new to the whole false eyelash thing, you guys know that I've just been using these that I got on Amazon. I got like 60, I think it's 60 pairs in here for like $15. There's like six different styles. And then I got this lash glue on Amazon as well, this lash adhesive, which is clear. So I'm going to grab one of these. They look like this. They come like this. And then you get like... There's like five or six different styles in here, I think. So I'm gonna grab this card right here and I'm gonna grab my tweezers and uh, pop these on. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. I think that literally took me like 10 minutes to put these on, so no, I didn't just like pop them on. I'm just going back in and kind of touching up my shadow. I feel like it's kind of ruined my I look but hopefully you can still see it I'm just not a false eyelash kind of a person at all and I mean at all so this is the look I'm going to oh all right I think I'm going to I think I'm gonna touch up my little wing here my little baby shadow wing I was gonna use like a gel liner underneath it just to give it some longevity but I feel like this video has kind of gotten a little bit long already so and I always attach these little lashes out here it's kind of like not tight lining but I'm just kind of stamping like at the root of the lash line which is like what I do when I do my liner and I'm just going to just put that little wing back I always kind of attach the um, these falsies to the um, a little bit higher up than like where my natural lash line is because if I because my eyes are slightly downturned right if I attach them right to the base, then the lashes would just kind of go like this. So just to kind of get that little almond eye effect, you guys know that I always like to wing out my shadow because I like that pulled out cat eye effect. So to kind of help with that, I just usually place them just a couple of millimeters, you know, above. Not too much, just a tiny bit. And then just kind of fix this wing here because my eyes 
So I do like that lifted eye effect. You guys know that I do that in all of my um, tutorials, but I also like that pulled out into a cat eye effect. So that's why I always do my wing um, kind of pulled out, but also kind of at the same alignment, kind of as my lower lash line is. So just kind of extends out. I kind of like that little, so I like it pulled out, but I like it with the little lip. So it's, I know that um, a lot of people like the straight up, you know, to where it kind of stops right here. Everything is cut off right here and just straight up. I don't like that look on me. I like more of the elongated kind of a feline cat eye look. So that is why I do it the way that I do it. Um, but I've seen a lot of the older ladies and by older, I mean, I'm like what, almost 60. So when I say older, I mean like 40 something, you know, like in their forties, but a lot of them kind of show the, um, you know, that lifted eye where they just kind of cut everything off. Like, right here and everything is lifted up. I don't like that on me. Um, I like more of that pulled out effect. I just, I think it just really adds so much more to the eye and just, it's just, I don't know. I love it, it works for me. So yeah, this is it. I think that is the end of the look. I'm gonna touch up my face. I'm probably going to use the highlight, I think in this Becca palette, since I'm gonna use this probably in my next look, I'm hoping. And then I'm gonna spray the face. All right, I got my fan here. Even my friend Fluff from the UK got a fan. Um, after seeing me, she's like, oh my gosh, I gotta have one. Oh, Fluff, you gotta get this too. By the way, look at this packaging, Fluff. Ah, oh, stunning. All right, gonna spray and dry. Using my Kylie setting spray. And that completes the look. And as always, you guys know how much I love my Too Faced palette. So the Gingerbread Extra Spicy palette did not disappoint. This is what it looks like right here again. All right, that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. I will see you in my next one.